it's important to be part of the collaborative because we share a lot of the same values. We embrace prevention, working with families, um, working with youth. We want to see families and youth succeed. The work we do naturally fits, um, but for the collaborative, we're doing it on a community, a community-wide um, scale, and so it allows me to be part of something that is larger and more impactful on the pop in the whole community and the population than just the people under the probation umbrella. And when we think about ACEs and trauma-informed practice, it plays a significant role for us, um, mainly because as we're working, we're developing case plans, we're having good conversations with individuals. We wanted to have a trainer so that we had somebody in-house that was our expert. I work in the intake unit, which means that I get to deal with the cases um, involving the children and their parents at the onset of their court proceedings. So it's really uh, a great opportunity for me to not only talk to the children and the kids about what they're looking at as far as court's concerned, um, making a recommendation to the court in regard to what level of supervision I think that they need. When we're looking at treatment and people being ready to make change, people have to be ready and having this knowledge allows those conversations to occur. It allows us to go a little bit deeper into their history, what's going on with them, and kind of open those lines of communication so that we can get them into treatment, that we can address the issues that need to be addressed. Here at the juvenile hall, when we're talking with our staff and training our staff, um, I tell them we do all the things here. It's abnormal for a resident to come in and say, no, my parents are, are both together and I come from a great home and everything's fantastic. Like, we, we just don't see that. What can we do to show them something different? Um, to demonstrate something different, to give them a structure, to show them a different way of doing things. It's amazing to see some things start to click and our residents say, Oh, I don't have to live this way, I don't have to do this. We don't make the children aware of their ACEs. We don't want to further traumatize them. We talk to the parents about their ACEs and in doing so, we can also make them aware that their children are more likely to have ACEs and we want to minimize those so that for future generations. What we've been doing here at the Shasta DRC is we have ACEs posted around the facility to help create that awareness and then start that conversation because it can be a tough conversation. At first for me I, I kind of scoffed at it you know and it wasn't something that I thought would help me you know, because up until recently, you know, in the past six months or so, I didn't really want to help myself. I was happy where I was at in life, and uh, I've, I've given myself over to the program and, and realized that, you know, you, you can't do anything in life if you don't change yourself. I know that a lot of things that happened in my childhood affected who I turned into. I'd never really considered that I could change that person. I have two daughters of my own, and uh, it, it made it's making me understand and realize that I have to be a different person in order for them to be different people. Because if I treat them the same way my parents treated me, they won't be any different than I am, and then it'll just be another circle. The people that we're impacting right now, it's gonna take them a whole nother generation before you know, we'll see the, their kids you know, raised and graduate, and then hopefully they won't re-enter, you know, enter into our system in 10 years down the road. If we've impacted 20%, even 30, it'll be what, it'll all be worth it.